Hello, and welcome to another episode of Cardinal Sports Live. I am your host, Paige Washington. Joining me today are Brady, Brady Hanley, Claire McGuire, and Dylan Thompson. How are you guys doing today? Great. Doing, doing all right. good, doing good. Brady, yeah. I heard it's your birthday. Yep, big 22. It's my golden birthday on the 22nd. Uh, not really sure what my plans are yet, but okay. I think I'm going to go out to uh, Fuji's, our hibachi place here in Muncie, see what I can get going on there. That sounds pretty good. It sounds like a good birthday to me. Um, are you guys ready to talk some football and some soccer? Oh, yes, yeah. indeed. All right. Well, Ball State had their first home opener this past Saturday on Family and Friends Day, where they faced Eastern Kentucky Colonels. The Colonels came out with intensity and scoring intensity, scoring their first four possessions and defeated the Colonels 41-14. to The defense was fantastic throughout the game, including interceptions from Mark Walton and Devin Hester, as well as two sacks from Anthony Winbush. So looking back to that game, what do you guys think that helped Ball State so much win this, get this win? Well, I think they really got back on track. Uh, it wasn't a bad start, finally. Um, in the previous two games, uh, they had came out with interceptions on their opening drives. This time, they scored on the first possession, and as you said, continued into the next three as well. Riley Neal finally had a standout game. It wasn't all the rushing attack this time. Um, he had two touchdowns through the air, one on the ground, and even though with Riley Neal's standout game, we still had that rushing attack to balance the offense. Uh, we had almost double the time of possession. I think we had around 38 minutes to their 20. Um, the defense still forced the two turnovers, still got a turnover every single game that we've uh, played. And I think the real, real cool thing about the defense was that we only allowed three rushing yards on 27 attempts, which is something that not a whole lot of teams can say at this point in the year. Claire? Yeah, not to take away from the defense or the offense, but I think it had to do with those red helmets. You know, they haven't <laughs> played in red helmets since 1970, and, you know, it, it goes back to – look good, play good, you know, you feel good, um, just hypes up the game more. But like you said, you know, the defense really stood out and um, had one of their best games they've had all year. And, you know, it just turns into Riley Neal did step up and it came, took some pressure off of that rushing attack and he finally played his best. Dylan? I mean, Riley Neal was good, but I think the, the real story here is Coach Mike New, okay? Mm -hmm. Mike New and this whole new era thing, he comes from actually coaching with the Saints organization, coaching over Super Bowl winning quarterback, Drew Brees, all right. Um, I do think that his his presence here is a direct correlation with Riley Neal. Riley Neal was perfect his first 16 passes of the game. Uh, he ended up going 28 for 39 with 238 total yards, two passing touchdowns, as well as a rushing touchdown. Uh, Mike New also, I, I really think he's, he's better for the whole program as a whole. Um, he made a comment, it was, it was a great crowd. I was really fired up. I'm very appreciative of our fans. We feed off them. For those of you who don't know, Mike New actually played here at Ball State. He was the MAC Offensive Player of the Year in 1993, and I just think this is what the program needs. And if they stay on track, I think Saturday is what we'll be seeing a lot more this year. Well, with such a dominant win this past week, Ball State is now two and one. Saturday, they will make a trip down to Boca Raton, Florida, where they will face the Florida Atlantic University Owls. The Owls have struggled this past these past two games only putting up a total of 17 points. So what does Ball State need to do this week to, you know, get this win? I think uh, you did say they've only scored 17, but I think <coughs> the real story here is that the, the two opponents that FAU played previously, they played Miami out of the ACC, a very good conference, very good program there as a whole, as well as Kansas State out of the Big 12. Mm -hmm. um, both those teams are, are very good football-wise, but I, th I think we, I want to look back at their, their first game of the season, which was against Southern Illinois a team out of the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Not the best team in Division I, but a decent team all around. Uh, FAU won this game, putting up 38 points. Therefore, they do have what it takes to strike and, and put up big numbers. But then again, I think Ball State's defense is what will keep them in the game. It's what kept them in the game against Georgia State when, you know, Riley, New had, Riley Neal sorry, had a rough time there as well as they, they even stopped a power offense IU from scoring in the fourth quarter and a dominant performance against EKU, not allowing them to score until very late in the game. But when it comes down to it, I think the defense is what is more important in this game. And if they can, if they can get FAU a couple four and outs, or three and outs, I'm sorry, in the beginning of the game, Riley Neal can go ahead and get it going. I think they will leave Florida going three and one. All yeah, right, Claire. I have to agree. You know, as long as the defense keeps up with the standard that they've set, you know, holds that bar that they've had, and just make sure that they keep up with that standard there, it should be an easy three and one win, not to take away from um, FAU, but you know, as long as our defense holds tough and Riley Neal steps up just like he has in the last game, I think we should be fine, you know, to adjust 
and get that win. Birthday boy. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Cardinals have a lot of room to improve, even coming off that last win against uh, Eastern Kentucky. Uh, they've yet to have a game without any turnovers. So that's something they really need to work on. I think Mike New is going to have them all over that in practice. Um, they got to show the whole playbook still. I know Riley Neal is probably the best player on the team, but uh, Gilbert and the whole uh, Teddy Williamson and all their other running backs need to get their one-two combos out because uh, the Owls do have that capability to score some points. They're the core of their teams in the receiving core. Uh, they really pride themselves on that. It hasn't been up to par yet this season, but um, they will have that figured out come against Ball State. Uh, the Owls have allowed 106 points in their last two games, as Dylan said, uh, against Miami and um, uh, their other opponent. But uh, actually, n those errors that they have uh, on their in those games uh, include their turnovers, their penalties, drop passes. Their offensive coordinator, uh, Travis Strickett, actually called them in one of the articles on FAU's website their own worst enemy. So it seems like they need to get over the hump, uh, figure out uh, what they need to do in their offense and their defense. Uh, coming off their worst loss in program history, they're going to be desperate for a win. They're going to be hungry. Uh, Ball State needs to look out. This is going to be a hard game for us, I think so. Uh, I, I have the Ball State Cardinals winning 31-20, to 20, but I think we're going to have a tough, a tough time. We might go down early. All right, we got your prediction. Any predictions from you two? Or? I, th I think Ball State will escape for sure. Okay. Yeah. Claire? I don't think it should be a very difficult game. You know, only allowing – they only scored seven points in their last game, you know, so – I think as long as Riley Neal holds up his offensive game and as long as our defense keeps their tight game, I think it should be a close game. You know, 31-20 is pretty good the prediction to me. So, All right, we'll, we'll see how that game goes. We're going to switch gears here now to women's soccer. They've had a solid start to the season, only losing two of their nine games. They had a big 1-0 victory against ACC opponent Louisville and had a dominant performance last Friday, beating Moorhead State 4-0. So what does this team need to do to continue to have a solid season and hopefully win the match again? I think they're doing everything right as it is right now. They're coming off a senior night. Typically, that's a big night for the girls. Uh, they're going to have a lot of motivation going into their next game. Uh, against Moorhead State on Friday, they had 27 shots, 14 of them on goal. That's kind of unheard of in soccer. Myself playing high school soccer, uh, I can tell you that that builds a lot of confidence on the team. Confidence is probably the biggest thing in soccer, in my opinion. Uh, it leads to faster reaction times, faster instincts. Just you come, It comes from all sources. So the goals, the stops, all that kind of stuff leads into confidence. I think that gives them a lot of uh, good momentum heading into the next game. Their offense needs to keep being aggressive mm -hmm. on the uh, against the goal. Uh, they've already shown that they can play a complete game. I think they got a, a lot of stars on the team, but conference play is a different monster. They're going to have to step their game up for that. They got to <coughs> prepare for harder opponents. I think they will come out winning the MAC eventually, but uh, I think they're going to have to go through a lot of struggles in the process. Claire? Yeah, I think as long as they ride this high that they have themselves set on. You know, they won the MAC last year. They've only lost two of their nine games. You know, they have 11 games left in the season. Five of them are away. You know, they've, they're one and two on the road. So as long as they can ride this high and they should be able to win the MAC. But, you know, they have to take everything one step at a time. You know, you can't focus too much on, I want to win the MAC tomorrow. You know, you have, so, you have 11 games yet. You need to focus on each game, each opponent, and make sure you focus in on those games first. All right, Dylan? I can simply just say, keep attacking. Uh, they're out shooting their opponents on the season 145 to 85 and outscoring them 15 to 8. Uh, and, and not only just keep attacking, but attacking early. They are, they are, they're, they're, excuse me, sorry. You're good, you're good. <laughs> their goal <laughs> differential is 9 and 2 in the first half of their games. But what, what really stood out to me while looking at the team stats is that the leading scorer on the team is, sen is senior defender Lorena White. Who is that's just crazy that a defender has the most goals on your team. So <laughs> also they need to they need to keep the fi they need to keep the field spread so that she can get uh, she can get shots on goal as well as Maddie Lee can come up the back line and get some shots off goal. Uh, what really stood out to me was their game against Louisville. They played against uh, the biggest crowd they've played against this year. Over 1,300 fans there. Uh, Louisville's in the ACC, a very good program there. So for them to be able to escape with a win um, is b really big. Then they came back home played Moorhead State and had a blowout win 4-0 there. Uh, but they are yet to they are yet to have a conference game in the MAC. So they they actually start that tomorrow here at the Briner Sports Complex against Buffalo. Mm -hmm. uh, I do predict that they will come out on top of that one, hopefully get some momentum going into Sunday against Akron as well at home. Well, hopefully women's soccer can come out and dominate these two games that they have this weekend like you did say. Well, that does it for this episode this week's episode of Cardinal Sports Live. Check out all our events happening this weekend within Cardinal Sports. Also, make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. 
Thanks to Brady Hanley, Claire McGuire, and Dylan Thompson for joining us on today's show. I'll see you next time on another episode of Cardinal Sports Live.